there from Santa Bank. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund says that it's made significant progress in talks with Ukraine's new Western-backed government over the resumption of a vital support program for the crisis-hit state. Well, the announcement puts the new Kiev administration one step closer to seeing the release of billions of dollars in assistance promised by the United States and Europe as part of their effort to cement Ukraine's recent swing away from Russian influence. Well, with me now is Nina Schick, a policy analyst for the think tank Open Europe. Nina, we've been here before, haven't we? The IMF going into Ukraine preparing some sort of bailout package. And yet in the past, either the IMF or Ukraine has pulled out of such a deal because they, uh, the feeling has been that Ukraine has been unable to abide or keep to the conditions attached to such a bailout. What sort of conditions do you think would be attached this time? And do you think that they would be relaxed in light of the current political situation? Well, the conditions that the IMF is likely to insist upon is uh, floating the Ukrainian currency, uh, cutting government spending, and also cutting government subsidies in the energy sector. Now, and the interesting thing is that the IMF was in Ukraine only a few months ago before the crisis started, and they concluded that not enough progress had been made for their support in the Ukrainian economy. Now, as the political crisis has heightened, the IMF has come back, and now they've said, you know, that they'll be able to act very quickly in crisis situations. And the, although the Ukrainian economy is in dire straits and desperately needs financing, the markets are hedging their bets on the fact that this Cold War style politics will win out and that the IMF bailout will be imminent. Because in the past, Ukraine has always had the option of uh, economically uh, going back to Russia for support. This time, do you think that that is an option? Do you see any sort of uh, calming down of the current heightened tensions between Ukraine and Russia? Or do you think that Russia, uh, that Ukraine rather, will have to abide by whatever conditions the IMF puts to it? Well, that is fundamentally the crux of some of the problems in the Ukrainian economy. The fact that it's always had this, been engaged in a tussle between the West and Russia. And when the IMF has come in in the past and asked the Ukrainian government to make some of these hard hard reforms which would hurt, you know, because they're politically difficult, the government has always turned back to Russia. Now, at this instance, uh, relations between Kiev and Moscow are probably not too good, so it'll be interesting to see whether or not um, they will actually enforce it. I'm Very briefly, Nina, one of the key conditions has always been that the Ukrainian government stop subsidizing energy prices inside the country. Now that Russia has hiked up the price that it charges Ukraine for its gas, could Ukraine actually do that? Well, it would need a lot of sig uh, significant subs um, assistance from the EU, uh, the US and its Western allies. But it would, it would be very painful for the Ukrainian economy. Nina, many thanks for coming and talking to us. Nina Schick there from the Open Europe Think Tank.